Alrighty, we're back in action here with smart inspection features for the Matrice 300 RTK and H20 series, covering Waypoint 2.0, live mission recording, and AI spot check. Waypoint 2.0 expands on the previous Waypoint features ability, giving us more actions and abilities. Live mission recording allows us to document a flight route and its actions to be repeated later on. An AI spot check enhances live mission recording by giving a visual reference annotated by the user of what should be in the photo when a mission is repeated. So Waypoint 2.0 can be useful for pre-planning uh, something or having the drone fly to dedicated locations in a repeated fashion. Live mission recording and AI spot check are useful for repeating a mission and having the drone take the same photo in the same location at the same zoom level, et cetera. So Waypoint 2.0 compared to the old Waypoint function now supports up to 65,535 points. SDK support is available. Some of the additional actions include gimbal yaw, camera zoom, timed interval shot, distance interval shot. And you can allocate actions to single or multiple payloads. So in this case, we just have the H20T on, but if you had a situation with a Z30 and an X-T2, could allocate actions to both of those payloads at a single waypoint. So building on this waypoint ability is the option to record your mission first by placing waypoints and secondly by taking photos and that action being documented. So first off here, by flying the Matrice 300 to a required position and by simply clicking C1 on the screen or the C1 button, and we have a waypoint added. We'll get a notification once the waypoint has been added. And then, as we see with the video here, when we take a picture, it's also going to add a waypoint at that location and add a photo action here on the map. So kind of taking us from the start, First things first, create a route, waypoint, live mission recording. You'll see it gives you the same interface as a manual flight, except we have our map documenting our waypoint flight. So we go ahead and take off with the drone here. One of the key things to remember is you're gonna to wanna to add some waypoints along the way to your first inspection point first time you're taking a photo. Then the drone has a path to follow as it's going to the inspection location. Perhaps not a big deal in some scenarios where it is completely clear going from the takeoff point to where you're taking the first photo. But if there's obstacles in the area, you need to be sure that when you're going from waypoint to waypoint or from takeoff location to the first waypoint, that the drone does have a clear path there. Obviously we have obstacle avoidance to back us up there, but we don't want to plan a mission into obstacles uh, if we can help it. So you can see zooming in for a photo here, got a couple cross arms. And when we take a photo, see the waypoint has been recorded and a photo has been tabulated. Can continue on down the distribution line and looking at the picture in the left, that's what this mission looks at like at the end, you can see we have our starting point and then waypoint two, waypoint three, we're about to take a waypoint. And this will be waypoint four, where we can also see uh, the camera action right there on the map. We can see the distance between waypoints. So no surprise there when we're going between the distribution poles, the distance is fairly uniform. Another thing to note you'll see here if you do approach some shadows, can do a single tap and then adjust brightness up or down. During the mission, it's going to be autofocus continuous, so you don't necessarily need to worry about at these specific points, uh, focusing the camera every time, and that'll be 
happen automatically as we stop at the points here and then also during the mission. So get the idea here as you're continuing along the distribution line, we'll continue to record waypoints as you take photos. And then within our waypoint interface, able to set whatever return to home action you would like. Okay, so after we've landed the drone, can go ahead and click on next, and that will enter the AI spot check view. So you can see top left, click next, and we're in the AI spot check function. Then we can select one of the pictures on the bottom to annotate it. We can tap three times on the photo, and that'll give us the annotation box to move around. So in this case, we're wanting to have this whole infrastructure here, get all four cross arms in there. Thus the annotation is around that whole facet. You can tap and hold the rotate button in the bottom left to adjust the angle of the rectangle as well for the annotation. And then you'll see after a photo has been annotated, it will be marked with a blue plus in the bottom left. After the annotations for the photos have been completed, you can go ahead and click the save button to save the mission. You can also exit AI spot check and re-enter it later. So if you completed a live mission recording, you didn't have time to annotate the photos, just that second, that'd be okay. Click on the edit button and then the AI spot check button is all the way on the right. So we'll click the play button now that we've annotated the photos to go ahead and upload the mission. Uh, just typical mission flight action here. See we also are connected to RTK. We can give the folder a specific name. We see the current aircraft battery, what, we are, what action we want upon the mission completion, the flight speed, and then can hit start on the bottom to get things going. So you can see here, we have our waypoint mission on the map and our mission will start. So this is the second time here. And one of the things you'll notice is those blue diamonds in the air that actually shows the next waypoint that the drone is going to. So pretty neat feature there. Those waypoints also show up on your horizontal display there. So you can see the next waypoint is 70 feet, 60 feet, 50 feet away as the drone approaches it. Now we can see our next waypoint is going to be on the left as the drone moves over. But during AI spot check here, ultimately the idea is to deliver accurate and consistent results over time with every flight. This automated flight will adjust the focal length, the zoom automatically, and it's going to be auto-focusing continuously as well. So you'll see, as the drone continues along, it's going to take the same photos as we were doing before, zooms out, searches for what was annotated, and then just go ahead and zoom back in. A few tips for AI spot check. Take pictures at a maximum hybrid optical zoom, which is what you see on the screen of 13 times. The ratio of the annotation box to the photo cannot be less than one to 25. The annotation box position should be in the middle of the picture and the size needs to be the same as the object being annotated. And if you're worried about something not being in the middle of the screen, before you take the photo, just double tap on your screen and it will be moved to the center. That's the easiest way to center the H20 gimbal. H20 or H20T should be installed on the gimbal connector port one, and then would also advise using RTK to improve our positioning. You can complete AI spot check with dual remote controllers as well. The drone pilot is going to need to use controller A to create the waypoint flight mission. The sensor operator can use controller B to take photos during the live mission recording within the mission flight while controller A flies the drone. So controller A is going to initiate everything and get the drone flying. Controller B can take gimbal control. After the mission is complete and the drone has been landed, controller A needs to obtain gimbal control 
Once again, go to H20 camera view, the white gimbal in the top left. Click on that to obtain gimbal control before going to annotate the photos. Otherwise, the remote controller cannot download the pictures. So it's key here, first obtain gimbal control, then go to download the pictures and annotate them. After controller's annotated the photos, they can go ahead and upload the mission to the drone to execute the mission automatically. And one thing to note here is that mission can be exported and saved externally on you know, your hard drive, just a backup, or you can use that to import it to another controller. So a quick video here on exporting a mission. Go ahead and click select in the top right. Click on whatever mission it is. Click on the export there. We clicked on SD card, and then the export has been successful. Sorry from the beginning one more time, went too fast. <laughs> but select, export, choose the external SD. We're just gonna put it on the root there. So we click export, export is successful. If you wanna import it, I'm just importing on the same controller for time's sake. KML import, waypoint, SD card. And then we're gonna scroll down and select waypoint seven dot zip. I'll say task target is X. We can replace it click on it, and then you can see uh, the flight route here that we exported and then imported is available. So export via the icon in the top right where you can select and then the bottom right icon to export. And then importing the KML is how we can import that onto another controller. All right, thanks for tuning in. Quick review before you wrap things up. Smart inspection, designed for inspection scenarios. RTK is recommended. Waypoint 2.0 provides more action choices for the pilot than the previous waypoint function. And that is enabled by the Matrix 300 RTK. Live mission recording is an easy way to create waypoint inspection missions while conducting usual operations. So you don't really necessarily have to do much differently. Maybe add a couple waypoints during your flight to guide the drone. Those mission files can be stored and used for future inspections where you wanna be completing the same route. And then AI spot check is something we can add on top of that live mission recording after that's been completed where mark the subject of interest in the camera. And then when the camera goes back to take those photos, it's going to make sure that that item is within the camera view when it goes to zoom in. Thanks.